Welcome to Manga Marit Dad Movies, a show where we talk smack about movies. It's that more often than not, we don't have to talk smack about movies. We talk about movies we really liked, including Tokyo Ghoul, the movie, which we just saw a week ago at this point. We record these too late. I mean, we, we saw them Thursday. It doesn't matter. Don't give the exact days because it's irrelevant to when these come out. I mean, we saw it like four days ago. I guess. Four days ago at the time of this recording. And, yeah, I... Was not expecting great things from this adaptation of Tokyo Ghoul, but I dare say this might be my favorite iteration of the story yet. What say you, Wee Lord? Because you're definitely not enthusiastic about this movie as I am. I don't know. I'd say I'm like positive about the movie. I don't think it's like the best interpretation of it. It's better than the anime, though. I mean, clearly. Yeah. That anime is terrible. It rushed through too many things, and that was its biggest problem. Yeah, even then, it feels like it misconstrues the actual themes of the story itself. And I think the biggest problem of the anime is that it was trying to get to a certain place by the end. Yeah, it was and trying And this to... movie knows better than to try and get to that it place. It knows its limitations, and it chooses a good story to adapt. Yeah. That doesn't get us to like the big like like the big epic stuff that people talk about in Tokyo Ghoul but it's a good story nonetheless. It doesn't feel the need to cram characters in where they don't need to be. Yeah. It knows what to focus on and honestly what it focuses on is what I always thought was the most interesting part of Tokyo Ghoul. Kaneki learning to cope with being a ghoul and unable to eat regular food and having that craving for human flesh and whether he's able to cross that line into eating humans and then the conflict between the ghouls and the CCG and who is right and wrong in terms of who is hurting the other and killing unnecessarily in yeah. crueler ways. Yeah, th th that's definitely a big theme of the uh, parts of the story that this uh, movie adapts. Yeah, and to me, they were always the most interesting part. The part with Hanami and her mother, to me, was the most interesting part of Tokyo Ghoul by far. Because we have the introduction of Mado and Amon and their great antagonists. And then that entire conflict is just so interesting with one side killing the other and then another side killing someone on the other side, mm -hmm. and that perpetuates a cycle of violence, and ultimately Kaneki has to come to the decision, no, I don't want to be a murderer. I'm going to stop this. I'm not perpetuating yeah. this cycle anymore. Yeah. Although it doesn't completely stop things because Toka didn't follow the same lesson. Hinami did, but Toka went through with killing Mado. Yeah. Though... In the process of doing that, she also recognized, oh, this guy had a family. So, and that's maybe gonna the bite them later in the story. Maybe the place where he was coming from was because the ghouls did something to his family. Yeah. Th that's, that's some interesting stuff, but I don't want to spoil anything. But, yeah. Right. I mean, like, I mean, the, this, the arc that this adapts, which, I, I don't know if this has, it, like, an official name, does it? Like, it's just Tokyo Ghoul. No, like, the arc that this adapts. I don't care about the arc names. To me, like, the most interesting part about the movie, beyond just what it focuses on in terms of the story, is that it is really well shot. The cinematography in this film is excellent in terms of how locations look, like... The scenes, just all of them, are just really beautiful looking. They, they look They're, how they look how you'd expect it to look in a live action. They look like the manga brought to life in terms of yeah. like the grayness of the world. Like it feels like the real world, but there's like this tinge of grayness that also reflects like the grayness of the morality of yeah. the character. It has like the bleak, dark colors that like really kind of like portrayed in the manga, mm -hmm. but it, it just comes to life here. Yeah, so it looks incredible. 
The CG is the movie's biggest weak point yeah, because the, the Kagunes do not look great. They the Kugu- look the Kagunes look dumb. They, they honestly look dumb. I appreciate that they try to make them more flesh color- colored to reflect that they are a pro- the bodies of the ghouls. In the process, but- though, they just kind of look more ridiculous, though, because like. With the CG they're using, it just kind of looks really awkward. The biggest problem is just that they aren't rendered in the most realistic of ways. Yeah. Like, Japanese CG just is not on the same level as Hollywood CG, so it looks even faker. It looks yeah. even more out of place. It looks like something from a video game. And, yeah, I'm not going to lie, that takes you out of the movie a little bit, but... The action choreography is really good, particularly in the final battles of the movie. So I'm still sucked into what's happening, and I can ignore that a little bit. But yes, definitely when you're focusing on just a still not moving shot where a character has their Kagune out and is just hovering, it looks as fake as the chains in Black Clover (laughs) Episode 1. I'd say it looks even faker to even be Even faker, because at least Black Clover is an animated world. Yeah. The eyes looked pretty decent, though. The red eyes. Like the red eyes. Yeah, the red eyes looked okay. They were passable. Mm-hmm. But the acting was superb. <clears throat> Masataka Kubota was incredible as Kaneki. I liked his performance. Yeah. And I felt like he made the character feel more like a real person than the manga's version or the anime's version. I don't know. Because, no, I really felt like, yeah, this is an awkward, socially inept guy that I can imagine in real life. And his okay, heart that, felt that, believable. That, that, that so his yeah. mannerisms felt believable. Like, the scene where he's, like, hugging Rize, that, and then, like, how he's, like, slowly kind of realizing, oh, this is actually happening. Such great acting there. Okay, yeah. That, that stuff I do agree with. My main problem is, like, near the end when, like, he's an uncontrolled ghoul. It just gets to the point where it looks way too ridiculous. All right. So the part where he's, like, shaking his head and screaming. <laughs> that's that's, so, that's Everyone so laughed dumb. at that part. That he was looks silly. So dumb. That was silly. Everyone laughed at that. Everyone, when they were walking out of the theater... Was like, oh wow, that part was so fun- hilarious. What were they thinking? Like, but like, this is the thing. Like, I remember that scene from the manga, and yeah, Kaneki does have a mental breakout there, but he doesn't look so fucking stupid. Yeah, it's just the fact that he's just bobbing his head <laughs> up and down, so <laughs> screaming. Dumb. is so silly. Even but like, like, he's like doing all this weird drooling. It just kind of looks weird yeah okay so fine that's one part where okay. i think yeah they aside from that aside from that i think played it too over good. the top like, but his his voice performance especially like regardless of the scene his voice performance was fantastic yeah all the actors really feel like how the characters would be if they were actually real people and modified to reflect that yeah you know fumika shimizu was excellent as toka Yo, Oizumi was incredible as Madao, and he's going to be Shao Tucker in the FMA live action movie, by the way, which is, again, great casting. So, even over the top characters like Madao, I felt like were portrayed in such a way, though they were still like a little bit of the anime roundy character that they were, but they feel more like real people. And I think that making the setting and the characters feel more realistic really helps the themes of this story and yeah. really sells the horror aspect of it. Again, going back to cinematography, like one of the most uncomfortable gut wrenching scenes of the movie is when Kaneki is like scouring his fridge or something to eat, but he can't find anything edible and he's just throwing everything up. Like he, he's trying to yeah, chug it all down with milk and he, like... the milk is so awful that he's throwing it up. And then you get that great contrast when, when he's at Anteku and he is like, trepidation over the coffee being served to him and so he slowly picks it up and he slurps it and then there's like a look of disbelief he's like looking at it shaking his head and he's like tries to get it he's like this is delicious like great acting great performance there again performance cinematography excellent but going back to the horror vibe again like the use of night scenes, the the use of claustrophobic attitudes and reflections 
really communicate that great horror vibe. Yeah. Like, how they use Kaneki's visions of Rize as a reflection of his ghoul side, really great in reflecting the monster inside him that he's so afraid of. Yeah, if you compare that to, like, what the anime did for Rize scenes, this way works way more, like... I guess this this feels way more fitting mm-hmm. than what the anime did, where they shove in these random Rize scenes, but they just feel out of place. Yeah, and they tone down the psychosexual aspect of it. Oh, yeah, for it's sure. It's definitely more horror, this is the monster you're becoming aspect, yeah. which I appreciate. I mean, just the horror in general, they just did a great job of translating that into a live-action setting, because I actually think, I don't think that, like, this horror is necessarily better than what Tokyo Ghoul presents, but in in a manga, over the top, more over the top, like, depiction works fine because it's a comic. Here, though, you can't really do that without it looking, like, I guess, ridiculous. So, actually, to- Tony down making more, like, a subdued style of horror worked really well. I agree. I really thought that the first half of the movie was the strongest part where it was just focusing on the horror. It was just this slow build to Kaneki, like, coming to the fact that he's a ghoul. And then it just ultimately leads to him breaking down when Nishio attacks his friend and he becomes full-on ghoul, like Hide, yeah. So that was, like, a great slow build. That was a great idea to just make the first half of the movie so squarely focused on his transformation and the second half is the Hinami stuff and the transition is seamless because you get enough setup for the Hinami half like earlier on because the characters show up earlier the scene after the title sequence is Madao and Amon killing the father and then Pursuing your investigation of the mother and daughter. So it all feels very cohesive, even though they're like two distinctive like arcs for Kaneki in the film. Yeah. And like he moves from one climax to the other in a very great way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they make it flow pretty well for like two stories that were kind of not intertwined before. Thematically, I don't want to restate the stuff that I have already said in my previous thoughts on Tokyo Ghoul that you can find on episode 11 of the podcast. Yeah, or but, recently on YouTube. Yeah. But I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I really like how the CCG treats the ghouls as if they are animals. Like, Madao specifically states that he considers them pigs. He refers to Hanami's mother as a so. And, like, he completely is denying that they have any human emotions or that they have value as, like, human beings in the same way. Yeah. And, you know, he's played as, like, this really villainous, almost cartoonishly so figure until you kind of realize that, oh... We see through his relationship with Amon that there's a connection there. There's an understanding that they both lost something because of ghouls. And we yeah. get that confirmation when we see the wedding ring on his finger after Toka kills him. Yeah, I mean, for Madao himself, it, like ghouls are a very personal grudge for him because like, they did make him lose his loved ones. Like I'd say Amon, though, is a lot more ambiguous about him. That's kind of a big thing like in the manga is that uh, Amon, Amon has a conflicted feeling about his like perception of goals, especially since he he is like he, he growing up he was exposed to goals in an interesting way, and that has like troubled him his entire life. And that's like the scene where Kaneki spares him in this arc is what troubles him for the rest of the series. And this is and that's why like Amon wants to talk to Kaneki he wants. To not really kill him after this and actually talk to him and try to understand what ghouls really are. Are they really animals or are they more like humans than the CCG is trying to make them be portrayed as? Right, but he has to get to that point. In this movie, he definitely was on Motto's line of thinking yeah. that ghouls are the one who was coming, causing all the suffering and pain in this world and you need to be destroyed. Yeah. Which is reinforced when Toka kills... His friend who was aspiring to be an investigator like him. 
yeah, which like, was also a very good arc because that friend guy, he was very friendly, easygoing. He was a good person, and he wasn't even that mean spirited towards the ghouls. But Toka killed him, and she didn't know that this guy, what he had done, if he had even done anything, she killed him, and he didn't deserve to die. So Amon is perfectly justified in his hatred of ghouls and Toka and wanting justice for him. Yeah, I mean, like, very much at the beginning of this film and the beginning of this arc, Amon is, like, kind of a by-the-books guy. He kind of views, like, okay, the ghouls are the bad guy. The humans are, like, in the right. But, yeah, between, like, Kaneki sparing him and Toka killing his friend and, among other things, from his past, it all kind of jumbles up into, like, him being troubled about what ghouls really are. Are they really the enemy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, really, uh, like, if we ever do, like, a full, like, like discussion about the original Tokyo Ghoul manga as a whole, I'd go more in-depth than this, but um, Kaneki and Amon, their personal character development and journeys are just the most interesting part of Tokyo Ghoul for me. Because they both go in different directions, but they both intertwine. Yeah. At the same time. And it's just such an interesting thing to see throughout the course of the story. One scene that I really liked in terms of Amon's perception of ghouls is the way he looks at that kid who has lost his parents due to a ghoul. And then Mato telling him, hey, don't forget your past. That's what makes us yeah. stronger. H- have That's you gone to Amon's flashback? In the I don't remember. It's been I, so long. You stopped in volume 8, right? Yeah. Yeah, then I don't think you got to it. But yeah, at first, I, at first when I first read that, I'm like, huh, I wonder like what happened to him. But once you actually see the flashback, it all like just comes together. It's just like, Oh, that that's why he's so motivated then. I see. Well, I'm yeah. interested, and hopefully I will finish the manga at some point, and maybe we can reconvene and discuss it in its entirety, because yeah. I would be interested in that. Yeah, to- Tokyo Ghoul's an interesting story. It's not perfect, but damn, does it have some good characters, some good action. It's, it's fun, and this... Film captures that. This film understood it, unlike that shitty anime. Yeah. This adaptation was excellent, but I'm not sure if most audiences will feel that way. Looking online for reviews, I've seen more mixed impressions. Most people seem caught up in the visuals. Like, yeah. They feel that it looks cheap. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like, especially from... American film reviewers that I think they American... don't understand the limits of Japanese cinema in this regard, at least Japanese blockbuster cinema. I think so. a lot of people were also expecting it to be like a lot more action heavy. Like, yeah, or this. I guess th- there is a fair bit of action in this, but I guess more of like later Tokyo Ghoul action, where it's like Kaneki like going full on ghoul and like yeah. beating the shit out of. People. I mean, the fans might have expected that, but reviewers appreciated the psychological horror parts more yeah. than the actual parts. They thought that the ser- the movie lost a lot when it devolved into that, which I disagree because I think that action half of the film is very much connected to the psychological horror half and they mesh very well together. Mm, yeah, definitely. But to recount the opinions of people in the theater, there definitely wasn't applause after the movie ended. And we saw it in a pretty full theater. Fairly yeah. full. Definitely well, sure. fans of the series and the audience, although it seemed mostly fans of the anime version. There were, pe- there were people behind us wondering why Toka's hair wasn't purple. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh... That wouldn't have looked very convincing in live action. There was definitely people who were disappointed that they didn't get to the part where Kinecti goes full ghoul. Honestly, that would have just just felt so rushed, though. There's there's too much there. Like, I guess you could rewrite everything and just, like, somehow make it work. But I don't know. I, I I I found, like, them doing it this way, going with a less... I guess, dynamic story arc, but, uh, I guess, narratively important story arc and adapting that was a lot better choice. 
I get really annoyed with the people who say that they were sequel baiting by not adapting more. How is that? They didn't do any sequel baiting. No. Yeah, there's no post credit scene. There's no implication to those they, I, I, until where Gourmet didn't show up and like start doing weird monologues. Yeah. Like, just because that they didn't adapt the whole story doesn't mean that they are planning to do a sequel. In fact, they just chose a good portion of the story to make a great standalone film. Which yeah. is what you should do. No, I'm sure they'd be happy to make a sequel, but... I couldn't gauge the overall cohesion of opinions. Because I heard someone say, that was a train wreck. But then I heard someone say, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. That was actually better than I thought it would be. And then I heard someone say, I want to watch this movie again. <laughs> I hope the Blu-ray comes out soon enough. Uh, Maybe it'll come out in December, like what happened with Attack on Titan movies. So, again, I couldn't get a gauge on, like, how people in the theater responded to this. I think, I'm it, I think, it think it's means, all around. Uh, I think it was all around. Maybe slightly more towards positive. Yeah. I, it wasn't, like, overwhelmingly hated, though, like, the Death Note live-action film, though. Yeah. Because this actually respects the material on, like, fucking Death Note. Yeah. Well, you would hope so, coming from a Japanese producer and film studio but yeah. then again we have those attack and titan movies which do but, their but own because thing because eating that already eaten apple was such a stunning scene <laughs> such, such a deep storytelling said oh no no but i guess that's about it for our thoughts on the tokyo ghoul movie overall i highly recommend it and i would rank it among my favorite films of the year actually because wow, i really enjoyed that, it that's surprising <laughs> Not top five, but right now I guess I'd put it in my top ten. But then again, I probably only have seen 30 movies this year, so thank that for what it will. I mean, I guess I enjoyed it more than Dunkirk and The Wind River. Oh. No, it's pretty easy to enjoy anything more than Wind River. I mean, Wind River, more like White Pit Privilege <laughs> River. Uh, <laughs> white Privilege River? But what's another good like R word that's like ba- bad? Um, racist. White Privilege Racist. Okay. Wind racist. Yeah, Wind Racist. I don't care. Wind River was a bad movie. Don't watch Wind River. Yeah, but do watch the Tokyo Ghoul movie, which hopefully will be out on home video soon enough. Yeah, I th- and I, think, I would yeah. consider picking it up for a good price. Yeah, I think Funimation gave a release it already. If not, it's going to come out fairly soon. It hasn't been released on home video yet. Well, no, I, I, I'm thinking that they gave like an actual release date for the movie. Oh, but okay. I, I don't think... I, I can't remember it off the top of my head. But if if there is a one yet, it's going to come out soon anyways. And if you're on the fence on whether you want to watch the movie, Funimation uploaded clips on their YouTube. You can check those out because they chose some good scenes that should convince you one way or another whether this movie sounds appealing to you. Yeah. But I definitely would say that even if you didn't like the manga or anime, you could give this a shot because I do think this is a better interpretation of the source material. Yeah, especially if you've only watched the anime. Go go watch this film or the manga. The anime is a terrible representation. Fuck the anime. The anime sucks. The anime sucks. Yeah. The anime is bad. You need to do something about the language. We're going to get mass demonetized. You could just bleep the, 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 the I swears, I think. Yeah. At least I'm not... I don't know. Trying to think of something that like get like a content strike or something. Well, if you showed uh, yourself eating human flesh, uh, that would definitely get our channel deleted. So it's a good thing you're not a ghoul. Well, what did Monkey do to get his channel deleted? I don't know. Let's not devolve into that. Let's instead move on. Will this be the end or? I don't know. Let's move on to the next thing.